Oh, here we go, my friends. Here we go. We're busting out another Alluvium showcase for all of you, and it's going to be a showstopper today, my friends. I've got Grant Warwick along with me. Let me tell you what you have in store on the leakiest show on the entire internet. On this episode of Alluvium Showcase, we've got videos, memes this time from Grant himself, some of them very memesy, art, environments, characters, rocks, of course. And of course, none of what we're talking about today is financial advice. Go do your own research. Obviously, you're watching right now, so you're a genius and you're researching this space on the internet. But please, just realize we're trying to show you cool stuff from a game we're developing. Did I mention a moment ago? Never before seen overworld gameplay. Gameplay, 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 gameplay. Let's bring on Grant on the episode. Grant, this is going to be leaky as hell, my friend. How you doing? I'm doing really good. I'm on my normal sleep schedule now, so I'm awake. I'm fresh. <laughs> At last. That's fantastic. I love, Man, your headphone game is the strongest headphone game I've ever seen. I gotta get me some of those headphones. Yeah, audiophile. I know, you are an audiophile. One time, guys, I sent Grant a link. I'm like, hey man, have you ever considered buying these studio monitors. I sent him a link to the ones I have here in my studio. He's like, yeah, I've actually got ones that are 10 times more expensive than that. And I realized I needed to stop telling Grant about audio video equipment. This guy blows me <laughs> I <away."> remember <laughs> that too. You're like, yeah. I was like, these are life changing. You're like, yeah, I've got the best studio monitors on <laughs> earth. Enough anecdotes. Let's show gameplay. This was one that actually I captured. Uh, in my gameplay session. Let's play the clip and then let's give them some context. This is never before seen overworld exploration footage. And then let's give you some background information on this. Just captured it right here on my computer in my studio. Raw gameplay, no edits, check it out. This is a great episode, I'm telling you. I love how you mastered the movement mechanics as well. <laughs> Thank you. It only took hours. <laughs> <laughs> but once you get a feel for it, how good is it? Like, and like, ah, oh, I'll explain later on in the episode, but it's only going to get cooler. It does feel really good. It took me about three hours to master it. Okay, I'll turn the volume down on the clip and we'll just keep letting it run. But the context on this clip, I'm hitting Q here, which uh, through my visor can help me identify uh, resources on the map as well as encounters and as you upgrade that visor correct me if I'm wrong there Grant that will enhance your ability to spot basically the the distance, uh, I the distance and items of interest essentially yeah. you're trying to yeah. discover in Crimson Waste yeah. in this current version of the beta like so once again you know it's a first beta not everything's implemented but if you remember in the trailer she like presses her visor and shoots out that beam Yes. to track the pangolin. That's not implemented yet because we've got to do the VFX for that. So eventually when you hit that button, it's going to beam out like in a circular radius from you and you'll get a visual representation of how powerful the visor is, but that's coming, so. Got it. Yeah, it, it was very beta-y. I didn't understand how good the visor was. Yeah. I just noticed that it was more very effective when I went from the basic one to the supreme visor. Uh, yeah. So, and also the traversal became easier when I upgraded my boots, my jetpack, um, I mean, boots and jetpack. So that was really, really awesome. Cool. We have yet another one, and I'm going to let you provide the context on this one because I know that this is a bit of your baby that we're about to show here, which is the overworld capture process. And this may be the first time anyone publicly is seeing this on, you know, on video. So I'm just going to play it and we'll take it from there. I think we've shown it, but I mean, this is a combination of all the lead artists on the team. Yeah. And this is still not final. We don't have to resist in here. I love the over-the-top HUD kind of purple glow that Sumo has done. There you go. So the, the border you're talking about around the edge there, mm. that gets more intense, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. uh, as you basically uh, play it safe in these battles. And so in mm -hmm. this particular battle, I played all my most powerful alluvials. 
which created more dimensional instability, which is all that purple particle effects on the border. It does mm -hmm. become more intense throughout the entire sequence, correct, Grant? If you kind of yeah, play absolutely. it safe and in the I encounter? I don't think sound has fully been implemented also in the beta. We've got to do the version where basically as the... See, like in the background, you can't really mm -hmm. see the dome coming in properly yet. There's a few things we need to tweak, right? So it's good, but... It will improve and that will become more obvious, the dome actually collapsing in. We've got to implement the VFX for the board itself. You know, you see at the end there when the board collapses like that, yeah. that will happen during the battle as you place more characters down. Basically, we thought the, the, the coolest thing about Pokemon was that moment where you've got it in the ball and you're not sure if you've caught it. So like, how do you take that feeling? We just duplicated that and only had Mozart like he is now and everything else was normal. Well, you're not adding to it. You're not improving on that tried gameplay loop. And we thought, well, if we're going to go to the extreme, we may as well really go to the extreme, make music, VFX, sounds, visuals. Everything has to be cranked. Got it. That makes sense. Um, so, great. So there's going to be further improvements to this then um, as Massively. we move forward. It's already totally visually so, impressive my first time seeing it it really delivered uh it's the visually last... mm -hmm. go ahead sorry sorry dude i was gonna say it's visually impressive but we don't have the cutscenes integrated also so right now the camera is just eh, it's just locked on mozart it's not like the camera is going bang and like cutting in to mozart full screen with depth of field and all of those types of things because first you know, if we go to that length and then people say, oh, we don't like this or that, then we've got to redo it. We, these are the fundamentals of the capturing flow. And then we do the easier things, like right now where he's capturing, the camera is just, it's kind of stationary. So for people who haven't seen this, it looks cool. But from my perspective, like from an art direction perspective, you want the camera to be dynamic and moving and shifting and having sound effects between these moments. When the board comes out, you want to little cinematic sequence where Arlen is like freaking out and you know jumps out of the encounter as it collapses in all of those things take a little bit more time but I think it looks amazing we've got all of the fundamentals in there to make it a truly oh sorry my phone it's all good going up. and also I, I have a question for you um about after the alluvial is captured and we move into like the let's call it menu screens here where you see the statistics yep. I, yep. there was like a hero or there was like an animation i believe that's going to be happening there is that true or is the alluvial just yes. going to be sitting on the plat so they're going to do like a celebratory animation when you capture them as well is that correct absolutely they all have a signature animation this signature is the moment animation we... was the term you yes. used right 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 yeah. right 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 okay i've been we've been sharing those in the showcase episodes for the last few months and, you know, we've made some significant progress with that. I think we've done about 50 of the characters so far out of 185 or 100. You know, the Dokers are similar. But we, we've we started cutting into that. Each alluvial has something like 15 individual unique animations. So you do 15 times 185 characters with five animators on the team. It's a lot of work. But That is a lot of work, yeah. I'm, I'm getting excited, man, because we've... A lot of people now getting... This is the last showcase before the Overworld beta comes out. So this is... After this, people have the Overworld in their hands. We finally get feedback. Reset as a team. And a lot of us were broken, man. A lot of us were really, really tired coming into this. We put our soul and passion and heart into this. And I've been recovering. I'm, I'm feeling great. So I'm trying to juice my energy levels back up and get back into this so i mean this this episode's big there's a lot of cool shit in here that people haven't seen i'm excited i agree we have another like 30 more videos or something to show all of you guys uh yeah, thank you for big. sharing that let's just continue to roll them it's out big. here everybody check this out we've got an alluvial on the battle board oh finally the komodo dragon stage three my actual favorite character actual favorite character i know you've said that multiple times so right here we're showing <laughs> we're showing off the vfx then in this case is that correct yes. with the smoke Once effects again. coming out of the lava holes essentially in its yes. back 
his smoke holes. He gets high on his own supply. So you got the the Snoop Dogg inspired alluvial. He's it's just so cool. Yeah. He is definitely Snoop Dogg inspired. And just to clarify what Grant said a moment <laughs> ago, the next showcase we're doing, um, I am currently planning right now a showcase where we're just going to straight up live stream gameplay of Overworld to all of you with the key development leads. Uh, basically walking all of you through all of the mechanics in the Overworld while, while I just play it live here in the studio. It's that finished right now in terms of uh, beta uh -huh. and beta release. So we'll keep you posted on that. That's our plan right now for the next showcase. Why leak anything about the overworld when we can just show you the damn overworld? Um, cool. So let's continue on our journey, my friend. Go ahead. We have, as, as I, I think I said on the previous showcase, we are in QA testing now. And QA testing has gone well. Like we said, that process takes a couple of weeks. And then it goes to the deployment team, basically getting it ready to get into people's hands. So there was bugs that we fixed. As you know, like you've been testing it, I've been testing it, the team's been testing it. Yeah, there were a few. And yeah. it's it's kind of like I take it for granted, right? Like I have played a lot of early access games, a lot of beta games, and you jump in and you're like, how did they release this? It's like so many breaking bugs in the game, crashes, and for some reason, I don't know if it's we've got freak coders or Aaron has just gone ballistic on trying to polish this, but the game never crashed for me. Like I didn't, I didn't report any bugs in the overworld. So I hope that that's the case for everyone, but it feels like everything we do is very stable. We had bugs in the very early auto battler, but in this previous one, we reduced the bugs by like 98% or something. So it just feels good that you're not jumping in and you're getting a crash halfway through. That was one of the yeah. things that we were scared about because it's like, what if you're in the middle of an encounter with a ram fire and your game just yeah. crashes, like in a live stream, like you can't have that. And we have, that is huge for anyone who's skeptical of early access games. When you play this beta, I think you're going to find that it's stable. It is I didn't stable. get any crashes and I, I'd captured footage for eight to 10 hours, no crashes. I had one bug in Sanctum Mesa. I was walking up the That's stairs in Arlen was like tripping on the stairs a little bit. Mm -hmm. That That's was it. Fixed. That's, that's fixed. fixed now. There you go. That yeah. was the only one I got. got so uh, <laughs> that's pretty poly. That's po so we've been saying this on these episodes. People get people want everything now and they want to know when. Mm -hmm. When we give you guys the beta, we want people to be impressed. It, it needs to be good enough for people to be impressed when they play it. And for us to feel comfortable at the quality level that we're sharing with all of you. And we're there. Let's continue the leak fest, though, my friends. Let's Gosh, we've got Hero Plant Jelly in the house. The passive VFX. So cool. look at the work we've put in. This is a plant. Like, if you look at that Avatar game that's coming out for the new for the new movies, their plants, like, that's a giant AAA studio, and we've gone to another level. You know, they, they had an amazing plant biodiversity in their trailer and i think we've just blown it out the water it's it's more unique it feels more avatar than the avatar game i just love when i see stuff like this because this is the final stage where there's sound there's passive vfx a another one so now you haven't seen plants animated and now you've got interactive plants where these are platforms oh no we shrunk it <laughs> it's okay it's it's okay i i will uh it's gonna loop it's gonna loop <laughs> sorry about you know, that so I did that at the key the, moment when this expands. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. There it goes. So <laughs> in Abyssal whoa. Basin, in Abyssal Basin, there's areas that you can only get to that's too high to jump to that you have to like froggy hop up these plants and they only stay active for so long, which is a typical gameplay mechanic. But we've got the VFX, the sound, the animation. It's so cool that, that these characters, these plants have to be rigged like this. You know, now we're going next level. Now we're starting to get to the polishing stage of these plants. Very So you'll cool. shoot this, jump on it, shoot the next one, jump on it, and make your way up to the, the harder to get areas. That's where we are, we are now 
So we did a lot of really good stuff in this project, right? As a team, we come up with a lot of good ideas. It's all a very collaborative approach on our leads meetings, environment meetings, game dev meetings. It's it's a very open atmosphere where everyone trusts each other. We all know we're awesome at what we do. And now that the Overworld beta has come out, the team has actually started using the movement mechanics. Mm -hmm. And you start getting ideas. You go, okay, well, the Overworld's are too big unless you have movement mechanics that allow you to traverse the overworld faster and that that also allows us to do things like add progression with the jetpacks the jumping the gliding sliding grappling hook that give you the ability to as you progress in this game to traverse the world faster and get more loot over other players who are just starting out so that overworld progression is we're now starting to get those ideas in. And later in, in the episode, you, I think I sent you a video, I hope I did, of the Shard Bluff region. You know, we're adding trampolines in and things like that. Like each region has its own unique movement systems that make that region unique. And I was saying to Dimitri, the cool thing about Crimson Waste is it's like an entry level region. You don't need a glider. You don't need, all you need is a jetpack and the jumping boots. But in the other regions, because we've tested, we've expanded on that and allowed the player to really, truly go crazy with the movement system. Exactly. And uh, between the jumping, jetpacking, and sprinting, it's definitely sufficient in Crimson Waste. And it's mostly about getting up on platforms and figuring out how to reach the other cavernous areas underground. That's the real traversal challenge. And of course, these acid pools Avoiding those, I genuinely died in them a few times. Polar bear attack is our next leak. Rawr. Yes. Tell me about it, Grant. I mean, we got a couple polar bears here. No audio or anything. But is, this, is this the this Omega is, uh, here? Uh, yeah, this is his Omega. So it's a work in progress. There's, as you play the game, uh, the overworld doesn't have this character in. It doesn't have all the characters. It has all of the PB2 characters in, but I love the fact that like we've gone so long now without showing any of these high powered characters and we're getting to a point where like as a player you want all of those crazy alluvials and we've just made so many different characters more than pokemon had it there's no shortage of like crazy stuff to aim for to finish teams off so i'm loving this stuff i'm it's so cool to see these characters finally in. we're getting close to having every character done in the game every last character very cool and people ask in these episodes uh is this the official alluvium background music uh yes you're listening to mm -hmm. a medley from the sound team that they gave me of all of the alluvium soundtrack that they were willing to let me leak and i'm just playing it in a playlist for you guys throughout showcases this has not been officially released you get to hear it exclusively on this show Holy plants, Batman. Avatar, come at us, oh, bro. Where you yeah. at, Avatar? <laughs> so Laura, she's one of our junior VFX artists. And when she came onto Alluvium, she, her folio... So sometimes you find people where you see their work and you only see a very small amount of work, but you know they have the eye and that drive, right? Like, it's, you see, when I was like 18, 19, getting started in the industry, I had the same thing. I had no folio, but I was enthusiastic about everything and listened to feedback. And working with Laura has been just incredible. In like just a few, like, you know, six, seven months of working with her, she'll do a base VFX. And then you go, well, what if we take it to a hundred, you know? And I was like, what, what if we make the spores around the plant interactive? Like these are hero plants everywhere in Abyssal Basin everything has to feel interactive now this tra this plant's too big to animate so let's make the vfx interactive and then she's gone and done something which is just crazy like the harder you shoot them the bigger the you'll see at the end here she charges up the shot and they get sprayed out a lot further just making sure that everything interacts nothing's static in the game nothing's just a box sitting there so here's here, that like, charge bang, shot yeah, mm. I saw it through the charge shot. Just, you see more particles, you see um, more interactivity. Yeah. yeah. 
you're running through the overworld trying to catch these wakes, which are going to be updated after this beta. You want the world to feel like it's living around you. And I, it's, <laughs> I can't believe it sometimes, man. We've come so far. I agree. And you know what's really cool? The fact that we get to show Forge Fusion leaks. Here we go, baby. Uh, this, this I haven't even seen update. this. This this is not this yeah. was a sound update. I have not seen yeah. the cool fusion uh, animations like this. So this is nah, fresh this is sound. How about cool. we if it's just audio, then let's be quiet and let them. This is it. a I'm gonna crank up the sound for just everybody. Just for you know clarity here. This is a temporary solution for the beta. Not everything's done. Got it. It's this is far from done. This is like as rudimentary as we can get in. It's just a habit. So don't get talked about this yet. Got it. So some, some definitely some placeholdery in this here, but this is an audio update for everyone. And this one right here is this is this to show um, the lighting work that is being done in Crimson Waste and sort of behind the scenes on that. Am I correct or incorrect on that? So I like sharing everything we're working on and not everything is all about the pretty art and animations and sound and vfx we have a really strong back-end team and tools team who's building proprietary tools that make development easier for us like packaging tools so like when we build an asset and bring it into the engine how does that become organized and not lost and how are the naming conventions set and we have it's a triple a game you know there are th tens of thousands of assets and this tool is a renaming tool because the names in some of the assets were too long and it automates the process so it's exciting it's, it might not be exciting to look at but to share it lets people know that you know we're not just making things look pretty for the for the user it's it's functionally being built as a triple a game future proofing ourselves where everything is organized and in its right location i'm the least organized person on the entire team guaranteed like if we didn't have aaron fronting this and making sure that and mark as well you know mark our lead environment artist mm -hmm. making sure that everything was organized things would very quickly turn into a lunatic shambles and it's actually as we develop it gets cleaner and more efficient and it's cool to see because i go into these regions and do work on them and everything's just so organized and where you would expect it to be and so once again it's not it doesn't look amazing but i think it's important to share that as a studio we do treat everything AAA. somebody clip the moment and send it over to to the other, other Warwick brothers where he said, I am the least organized. And repeat that and, me and meme it, everybody. Um, By far. Th hey, that's a strength. Recognize your own weaknesses and then find people uh, that have those strengths. Um, that's good leadership quality right there. Merchandise leaks. Let's get into it, my friends. Here's well, here's a video for you. Look at the, oh, the black oh. on black on black on black mm. right now. This is definitely... It's just so premium feeling to me to have, I mean, I guess maybe it's, maybe it's a, just a trend of today and maybe it'll be dated later, but right now that is a hot look, <laughs> black on black right now. <laughs> so most people don't realize that Roger, our lead concept artist has a side company that does merchandising and it's uh, in the Netherlands, it's ultra high quality and we're doing testing through his company right now with some of the designs that I shared in previous episodes. If you look a few showcase episodes back when we first started showcasing the merchandise concepts, now they're there in the real world. And I just can't wait to get my hands on them. Me either. And here's a vertical shot of what appears to be sweats. Mm. <laughs> How cool is it seeing like the full development of a game? Like everything, not just the game, but like everything that goes into it. It's just. Yeah, you're not I just seeing like a like link this. on the Twitter feed of, uh, buy this hoodie right now. You guys mm. get to see it in development, being printed, the samples, the people literally making it. We're showing all of that to you guys. 
uh, warts and all. You know, some of this might is unfinished. Some of it's low resolution. We don't care. We want you to be, well, you're already a big part of this journey as our community. And why, why wouldn't companies want to show the good work they're doing if they're proud of it? And I, I love the fact people are asking in chat, are these really leaks if you're if you're just showing them? I don't know, man, use whatever your word you want. But we're uh, we're being transparent and we're trying to show you how the sausage is made. I want these sweats, by the way. I'm buying a pair of these for my wife. Those are super cool. We have, uh, in the title of this episode, I said that we had infinity alluvial animations. We have more in this episode than I've ever seen before. So let's start, let's start pounding these out. We've got Sea Scorpion in the house. Zen is working on the resist animations, which you are going to see in the next overworld beta, not this one, but in the next version, all of these will be implemented. And yeah, it's just cool that, and sound is done as well. On this side. Oh, the, this is the finished sound right here. It's not placeholder. No, this is this. Yeah, we're, we're at sound now. So like I said, all the characters are nearly done. You know, characters, uh, we're running out of stuff on character work. That's cool. That's great. That's a good, that's a really good problem to have. Here's your drop bear, everybody. You guys requested more of the spookiest koala that's ever existed. It's jumping out from the end of your bed, Five Nights at Freddy's style, <laughs> haunting your dreams forever. Who wants this? Who wants to give this plushie to their five-year-old? <laughs> cool walking animation. I love the claw hands and almost looks like he's clawing every step forward and just about to kill you. I love it. <laughs> All Very of the cool. stage three alluvials just... It's, it's so cool seeing it come to life because early on we needed that balance between the different stages. Stage one being cute, stage two being like a little bit, it's going one way or the other. I think my camera is struggling right now. It keeps coming, it keeps turning on and off here. I'm gonna boot you oh, and no. bring you back um, in. I'm hitting the, my, okay. Should be good. You look good to me, Grant. I don't know, man. Uh, uh, the USB cable some... was getting knocked. Oh, so. okay, okay. I see. Uh, the the studio software we're using was having a hard time pulling. We're your back feed. to technical issues. <laughs> we're we're good. You can hear me, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. Cool. We have Moth Stage Two to show everybody as well. This one's I think new on the showcase. Mm. Uh, showing this Omega ability animation. Yeah. Uh, what's gonna Carpet What's going to be happening board. here? Like what's actually going to be happening once they reach that kind of apex of the animation um, on the battle board? So it carpet bombs in a line. Okay. Carpet so whatever, bombs. I think whatever character it's targeting at the time of the attack, it yeah. jumps up in the air and carpet bombs down on the board. So a lot of the alluvials kind of have that typical, you know, melee up close bashing mechanic, but mm -hmm. There are enough alluvials in the game that have very different types of attacks that just go completely against the, the grain. And I can't wait to see how people utilize these in the auto battle. You know, Indeed. Until we have every character in the game, the meta can't be developed. You know, you introduce one new character to the game, it completely changes the entire meta. So, speaking of changing the meta, who is disturbed by the way that those legs are moving right now? <laughs> I mean, this it seems natural I mean, like, and it seems unnatural at the same time. Almost, this is nightmare fuel to me. Maybe it's just me being weird. Is anybody else? Is anybody else like feeling like you've never seen something quite like that before, and that is kind of disturbing to you? Maybe it's just me. Once again, we could have just made it so that all the characters in the game were bipedal, two arms, two legs, same attacks like TFT, but right. we said screw it. Like once, same as the capturing, same as the Pokeball mechanics, everything you have to, if you're inspired by something, don't just copy it, add on top of it. And by taking an auto battler to this level where every character has different movement and rigs and like this is a very complex character to rig it takes a lot of work it's got yeah. toes like the, all those toe bones have to be animated and you know you've got if we didn't have the best animators in the world you couldn't do this you know this other games would it would look shit. it you know you try and go to this level the rigs wouldn't be good enough the yeah. animations would look sloppy and we just you know 15 different animations for each character 
as a base, we'll probably expand on that in the future. It's, it's, it's made it so much extra work. And the fact that we're still at this point two years in is quite honestly madness. It is madness. And yeah, the complexity of this is wild. It's a basically a spider with wings and antlers mm. yeah. with toes. Like you've got a, there's so much detail and movement. Like if any of this was stiff or wrong, it would just be, it would just feel wrong to look at it. It all has to flow and feel natural somehow. You've got the wings jiggling. You've got to integrate it into the game and make sure that it's balanced and doesn't break things. It's just crazy. Indeed. Speaking of crazy, crazy cute on the plushies. I'm telling you, the sloth is going to sell out. All the plushies are going to sell out. Here is your sloth stage three walk. So cool. Look at that smiling face, that little jaunty walk there. How, how do you do? You just feel like he's going to walk right by your house and go, how do you do, man? Really slow. Such a friendly chap. Love that. Love that walk. You just feel the attitude and feel the originality and, and, uh, in the feel of the character, just in the animation. Film, film, Hollywood film quality animation on every character. I agree. Yeah. And look, I put the disclaimer at the beginning of the episode and I just want to be clear. If you have children watching right now, turn them away. This is perhaps the most vicious thing that you will ever see. Okay, I warned you, here it is. Terror bird attack. Look at this attack. <laughs> just karate kicks. Yelling so at you. So many new just... characters. <laughs> Look at this thing, man. This is the most vicious thing I've ever seen. This thing's going to tear your freaking eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, look how vicious this attack is. I love this, man. He does the roundhouse and everything. He's, is... he's using the wings. He's using everything he's got to kill you. Games don't have animation this good. They just don't. Hollywood animators don't come and work on games if they can get work in Hollywood films. Right. It, we, we got extremely lucky that at that moment in time, crypto was booming. It was new. It was this big thing. And it was big enough to inspire our animators to come on and risk their career in this project. And it's just... Ah, uh, it's just cool seeing it all. Yeah, I love seeing your appreciation, honestly. He trained at Cobra Kai, probably, probably. All right, we have this friendlier, walkier version, though. There we go. Just walking, but look at, look at the eyes, though. Just like the Velociraptor in Jurassic Park, he's staring you down. There's another one in the bushes. Gonna take you out. Very cool walk. It's, I hope people realize that eventually in the game, we will have alluvials in the overworld. And the reason why we go to such extreme lengths to make all these animations and assets good is so that eventually, it will take time, we get them in there and it'll be better than Monster Hunter. You know, it'll be, it'll be alluvium. You know, it just goes to its own level. It, yeah, the, the name the, the name itself will mean a unique thing, sort of like when you say any of those other franchise names. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's your here's your boy, the penguin, everybody. Look at this. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Stage two Omega the ability. Naruto, stage two. I feel like we're about to go like Super Saiyan here and you're going to get the energy and the blonde hair and everything, man. Beautiful. Powering up, baby. I love it. And here's a merchandise video. Oh, this one had background music for you guys to check out. Just a little behind the scenes action for you. All handmade. Yep, handmade. So Roger owns that company, which is crazy. Selling like that lead merchandise by hand. Getting it ready for everybody who's watching right now. Super cool. Uh, that was a real, that was, that one's really neat. I like, I like seeing that. Really, really cool stuff. Dude, those were just the videos, Grant. We've got infinity images that we need to show people, including memes and rocks. Are you ready? Do you need a break or are you ready? I'm good, man. He's so ready right now. I'm so ready as well. So let's get straight into it. We don't have too much on the art and design side today, but I will show you what we have. And it is high impact and it is worth your time, my friends. Boom, right here. 
Iluvatar's set one collection. Hold on, Complete. hold on a second. What are we leaking right here? Give us some context, Grant. So the reason why Iluvatar's was delayed is because Roger, you know, it's like kind of Roger's baby, right? He's built the team to develop these and really wanted to make them more than just a profile picture. It was something that you could build a set of and collect them, you know? Like, it wasn't just one image on your profile and that was it. Let's be done with it. Let's just do what every other PFP crypto bullshit has done. Let's actually give them utility and make it so that over time, this is something people can work towards. And we're seeing the work Florian has done on, and, and Roger has done on designing the finder page where you collect that set and it's like the completion stage. So once you complete it, a little animation pops up showing that you have completed it. Every last detail on this project has had love and attention put on it. You know, if something just feels a bit flat and lifeless, we go rework it. We make sure that it doesn't. And this wasn't my idea or anyone's idea, but Rogers to go to this level. Like it shows that even the leads on our teams, if they want to improve the project, if they want to expand upon it and the idea is good, we'll do it. You know, you don't get that in other studios. I agree. I mean, look, I'll, I'll, uh, on the marketing side of things, as soon as this idea was proposed to us as a marketing team, we all mm -hmm. talked about the collection concept and we made a pretty heavy push to say, without the collection feature, Iluvatar's feels incomplete because it's mm -hmm. such a good idea. And I'm glad that we're, just like everything else, just like the betas that we're releasing, I'm glad we're taking our time to make the product as complete as possible before putting it in the hands of customers in the community, because that's, what, that's why everybody's following Alluvium. That's why people are mm -hmm. on board with this community is because they know that when we deliver, we will deliver quality. Yeah. I'm really excited about this. And speaking of quality, we've got some quality, well, this is all about NFTs, right? Quality memes. How I think I look <laughs> after well. buying $25 <laughs> worth of NFTs. Um, Aluvatars is more affordable now. <laughs> I randomly was going through the Discord and I, found, I was like, where did the off topic chat go in that Discord? and then found this channel where everyone was posting memes and just started pissing my pants. <laughs> I love Hasbro, you know? Look at his <laughs> eyes right here. Look, just look at the look in his eyes. God, look at all that money too. <laughs> anyway, good memes. We have a couple more memes on the episode. Um, that one was fun. Here is more merchandise, uh, sort of mock-ups, I guess we could call this. Is that correct, mm -hmm. Grant? These are just kind of 3D yes. mock-ups yep. or just yep. drawings? Yes. Black on black on black on black uh, as ever. But look on the back here. Look at the details. The ILV in the band on the back of the hat. The obelisk on the back of the hat. Really, really nice details there. Um, so black on black on the front. And then there's a proposal for a beige alternative with mm. alluvium purple. Very cool. Really like that. Rock <laughs> merchandise, my friends. <laughs> yes, indeed. You guys asked for rock merch, these are from the here community. it is. <laughs> these, these are from yes. the community. So I thought this is like, maybe we in future, we just do a little weekly meme segment where we do the community's best memes. <laughs> this is good. So this was directly from the community. Well, fire Roger, because <laughs> fire everybody on our art team and design yeah. team, because boom, here is some more rock merchandise. Look at that. I kind of like the rock coming off the side. I won't lie. The Photoshop work here is rough, <laughs> but I kind of do, kind of like the shirt. Am I dumb for liking this? Like I kind of like it a lot. <laughs> if you know, you know, you know, if you know, you I know. Think this, is the, this is the type of stuff that this is like, this is modern web culture, you know, <laughs> this is good stuff, my friends. Um, and the last one I want to show you is Rock Hat. Yes. Oh. Just slapping it on the side of that hat. That's so effing ugly. <laughs> this one's genuinely hideous. I love it. Very good. Thank you, community, for these memes. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Okay, let's get back to real leaks. 
here we are. Now, is this just, this appears to be just an update on the in, okay. um, the launcher menus, correct? Yes, but here's the thing. A lot of people in this space are wealthy, right? I'm, now, I'm not saying that's a good or bad thing. I, it just is what it is. Just in the, during that time, there was a lot of people and you know that because they're throwing around lots of money on land and things like that. And the monitor I'm currently using is a Samsung CRG9 5K wide by 1440p high monitor, mm -hmm. which is what I play Alluvium on. It's yes. It makes developing the game easier. And because Dimitri and I had these monitors from day one, we built the overworld to work on a widescreen monitor. It's the most immersive monitor you can get. And for anyone who's got the money, it's the monitor I would highly suggest playing on Alluvium because without it being VR, it's the second best thing to being immersed in the world. And I see. we had an issue where typically games are just 4K, right? 1920 by 1080, 3840 by 1440, uh, 2160. And it's the same Demetri aspect ratio, whether yeah. you're doing 1080p gaming, yeah. 2K gaming, 4K gaming, yeah. it's all 16 yeah. by nine, right? And Dimitri and I were like, this is bullshit. Like we've got widescreen monitors and the images in the home screen are getting compressed because they don't work on widescreen. So we're like, can I you see. please make it work on widescreen? Because if I were to recommend any monitor, then this has to be it. And for anyone who has this monitor playing, you're gonna see just how immersive the game truly feels. It takes it to another level. It's, I, I, I would never go back to not having a widescreen monitor. It's that big of a difference. Just Makes working sense. on it, the ability uh, a few to people have- in chat, A few people in chat are uh, saying they have that widescreen experience as well. So mm. you know what? this. Gives me inspiration. Maybe we could partner with a hardware partner for an Alluvium widescreen monitor. Just an idea. Um, it's anyway. I, I need to, I need to make an upgrade myself. You've inspired me. And here we are with some character <laughs> leaks. Got like six there already. I've already so got Sean. Yeah, I do have a few monitors, but none of them are widescreen. Maybe I could get rid of two of these and widescreen it up. Anyway. Dude. Yeah. I mean, these Absolutely. are all like the, re regular rectangles. I'm not on your level, bro. Oh, I mean, I think you're well beyond my level. You got four monitors there, man. All right. <laughs> we all have different purposes and needs. But in terms of just playing the game, then yeah, you're not on my level. You've got a like it's just we built it. Like I I've been building Crimson Waste with that, like composing different areas of the That's world. Cool. It doesn't look the same unless you have that monitor. And it still looks good, don't get me wrong. I've played the I've streamed the game, compressing it down to a you know typical aspect ratio but don't know if you said to me hey like why did we go to all this effort to play a game without it being immersive then i don't know it's up to you guys if you want to do it or not but that's my recommendation so and now it works. is asking does alluvium support 21 by 9 or only 16 by 9 you're saying we do support ultra wide correct yeah, that's what we're doing. We're trying to make it so that it will support. Because I play, there are some, like Rocket League, right? Perfect yes. example. I upgraded, and all of a sudden in Rocket League, you can see more of the field, right? It's, mm -hmm. you know, just extended. But the problem is all the UI and everything like that goes to the fucking edge of the screen. Like, right. you can't Because only a minority, so a portion of users are using widescreen. Yes. yes. But you do have but all because... of that extra in-game information, which is great. Yes. But yeah. I want the ability in Alluvium for you to be able to move the UI to the central area and then everything else is just for immersion. It's not like, hey, the health bar is down on the far left where you can't even see it in your peripheral. So, Indeed. Okay, uh, moving, moving on to this. So, said it a million times, all of the assets in the game were designed to be usable, not just in the game, but in cinematics, in future games, and mm -hmm. future-proofed. And in order for us to do that, we need to bake out high quality displacement maps for all the characters. So that if I export the game asset to V-Ray, I've got a version of the displacement map that works in V-Ray right. using only the game asset instead mm -hmm. of what other studios would do. Like if a typical workflow, if you're building a cinematic, the game asset 
won't be high quality enough to use in a cinematic because there's not enough topology in the right spaces. We've thought of that from the start. Like this asset has to work in the game and in a cinematic or a film or a Netflix series. And, oh, sorry, it keeps doing it. Um, it's okay. It's all good. So dude. Sean, Sean has to go in and polish all of those displacement maps, sometimes by hand, to make sure that it works. And the other cool thing is in UE 5.1 or in UE 5, displacement is sorted. So this would be something that would crush any normal modern GPU. But in future, it means that if a if games go from having RTX cores and then they start adding displacement cores to make sure that all the things in the game can be displaced, we've future-proofed ourselves and all of the assets will be the same quality as they were sculpted in ZBrush. So zero loss of quality. Oh, you're... <laughs> you're I'm muted. Your camera's being weird. I don't know why. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, but we have a big leak here that, we're, that we wanted that you just gave me before the episode. Skins, 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 and equipment uh, for people there to check out. So let me zoom in on some of these. So here you can see visorless and visor on uh, models, which is cool. And then, of course, you can see all of these skin variations on your armor, uh, which is phenomenal. As you can see, lots of color variety and design variety. Um, what context would you like to give people on these? So just before, so I spoke to Andre brought this up and we were basically saying in this first beta that's coming out, there's nothing really to work towards, right? We need to give the player, this is Andre, not me, saying we need to give the player Andre is to our towards. overworld lead at Alluvium, just yes. to let you know who this person yes. is and what their role Genius. is. Genius. Yeah. Genius. One of the people who doesn't get enough credit on the project that has just continually made this work. You know, he makes it work. He makes sure that the game runs and implements all of these cool things. And so now in the in the private beta for the overworld, you'll be able to build recipes for the suit skins. And it's kind mm. of like, and it's not an end game or anything like that. Like we're well off that, but at least it gives something for people to work towards while grinding the overworld. It's like- Makes sense. Extra progression since the assets that you're owning in the overworld beta, you don't get to keep, and so it gives you some additional sense of progression. Mm -hmm. That that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one issue with our uh, arena beta right now. It's fun to go as high as you can in the uh, different waves, but there's not really a sense of progression there. It's just, you know, you're sure. testing this one mode. So it's mm -hmm. going to be really nice to have that in overworld. I love it. These look great. I think we have even more to show. Here we go. Skin to win. And here is one of the skins in game, um, right there and by Mozart. the obelisk. Yeah. I'm sorry, what's that? And Mozart as well. Oh, I'm sorry, Matching I totally skin. missed Mozart. He kind of blended yeah. in here a little bit with the uh, foliage. Yeah. There's Mozart skin, matchy matchy with your armor, uh, looking fantastic against the obelisk, obelisk here in Sanctum Mesa. This is the obelisk back here in the background that you use to uh, go to the uh, to go to Crimson Waste in the beta. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And like people are saying in the chat, there is the Male Ranger coming too. Male Ranger is coming as well. Yes, we've Just showed you guys some beta. leaks. Yeah, exactly. We've showed you some leaks of how that armor the armor looks. It's in development in previous episodes of Showcase. Be sure to check those out for those of you that don't want uh, to necessarily play female Ranger. And XT said, I think as far as the skins go, you shouldn't be afraid to add something other than color variations, something such as a big fur collar for Lynx or tusks for Titanor. That is coming. In the stage three versions of the suit, there will be a VFX and a cosmetic add-on to the suit. So those yes. things take time, but it is coming. There will be that distinguishing feature in the stage threes. Obviously, you, want, you don't want it to just be a skin texture. We've said from the start, we're not copping out we want these to be the best skins you can get in a game and so they have to go through progressions you've got the stage one the stage two and the stage three yeah i'm right now i'm looking through my uh ain't my older episodes to see if i can find one of those unfortunately i can't do it on the fly i was yeah. gonna find some of the skins that we've shown in the past that have yes. like fire effects coming out of yeah. them and what have you and yeah. it's not just a 
paint over, let's say, uh, type of leak. Here's a meme for everybody. You guys remember November 2021? How about November 2022, baby? Who's rocking? Which image are you looking like, chat? Top or bottom? Type it in chat, top or bottom? We'll see which one wins. How about you, Grant? How you looking, buddy? <laughs> Dude, I'm lucky if I can afford a, an iron at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My we'll all get there. Is blood red. We'll all get there. <laughs> we'll all get there. Just we'll, gotta keep going. We'll get there together, either to the top <laughs> or to the bottom. Nobody, nobody knows for sure. <laughs> all Look, right. We've said so, from the very start, make a good game and the rest will follow. Just that's it. Make a good game. Anything else that happens, we don't know, but it's got to be good, right? <laughs> I, well, sold I, love, I, sold <laughs> yes, nice. I sold my iron for ILV. I sold my iron for, yeah, it's very nice. I sold my iron for ILV. Six <laughs> Tuz or whatever, how you, you pronounce your name. You win. You win. Congratulations. Okay, we've got some environment leaks here for everybody. Wow. This almost looks like the way this is arranged, this almost looks like a, a maw mouth of some description here in Crystal Shores, the way mm -hmm. this is arranged. That is crazy yeah. looking. This is still block out phase. This will be the okay. last region we finish. And Emil will be working on the block out for this probably for another month, I'd say. And, you know, maybe four or six weeks. And then this is the last region in block out phase in Alluvium. Every other region is blocked out. And we're well into progression onto the high, high res conversion. So I will be doing probably once the overworld beta is out. I'll start doing some live streaming on Abyssal Basin again. Mm -hmm. I did do a couple of streams. I did say I would. And so if you miss those, that's unfortunate. But in the future showcase episodes, we will be showing the high res conversions from the block out to the final levels. And very cool. Very exciting. Lighting on Abyssal Basin. So these are various ones. This is what I'm going to stream. So Marson or Martian, I don't, M-A-R-C-I-N. I don't know how to pronounce his name exactly. It's, it's I don't know. I apologize for that. It, I think it's Martian, but he's been doing Are the these in-game captures from Abyssal Basin? Yes. Yeah, wow, yeah. Wow, this are, is starting to look really finished. Yeah, zo yeah, zoom in on this. So what I wanted to do was stream to the public after a showcase episode one day and get mm. people's opinion on what they like most. But the thing that I think it highlights to me is that long-term, the vision has to be that each region has various different lighting scenarios that you can go to, to prevent things getting old. Like zoom in on the early morning look, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah look at this and down in zoom. the bottom left-hand corner. Um, this, the, just the variety in just these three shots here. This is mm. incredible. Sunset, you know? what looks like evening, foggy, and then look at this. You yep. can see the bioluminescence, the evening. The lighting makes this feel like almost an entirely different place. This is incredible. I'm, you know, Mark brought on Martian into the team, and I'm very skeptical of things that I do personally on the project, like set dressing, lighting, look dev. And it's sometimes hard for me to take a step back and just go, okay, you do it. Like, you're, you know, you've got to prove yourself and... Martians come onto the project and just blowing it out the water like it's as good as anyone can do and it's cool to see that because if you do it personally and then you jump into the overworld it doesn't hit you the same if you're just jumping into what someone else has done you don't know what to expect and I start to get the feeling of what it's like for a player jumping in who hasn't experienced it themselves and it's just such a cool thing to see the team doing. We've got all bases covered now. So if I magically got hit by a bus tomorrow, Alluvium keeps rolling. Got it. Well, hopefully you don't get hit by a bus and <laughs> you're taking it easy and you're being careful because of this meme. Who said crypto was stressful? <laughs> I'm 25 and I feel great. I mean, how does it feel to work 20 hour days over and over again? And then to be People constantly the thinking about your mortality and getting hit by a bus, Grant. Are you okay? <laughs> People in the chat were like, it's great to see Grant happy. It's like, I've always been happy on this project, <laughs> but just physically, like I've got an MRI, like both of my hands are gone. Like 
I got to have surgery on both of my hands. It's just this game takes it out of you, you know, but it was a sacrifice worthy. You know, we, we knew it was coming. My brothers and I from the very start said this is going to we might not come back from this mentally. Yeah, we might lose ourselves in this. But I think from an early age, it was always talked between us when coming up with game ideas to make a studio. And so now that we're living it, you've just got to go to a death. Like this was a from early age dream of ours to make a gaming studio. And now that we've got that opportunity, I don't think we'll get a second opportunity. You know, what happened over the last two years is once in a lifetime, you know, yeah. probably be looked back on in 50 years, like the great crypto explosion and then regulation came yeah. and then it settled down and, you know, then things became normal again. We got to live through that and had the perfect timing and team to pull it off with us. And so I think it's worth all of the work we put in. The way I would think about it, Grant, and look, you're a grown up, you can think about it however you want. Um, adversity shows us who we really are. And so mm -hmm. I don't think that you are going to lose yourself in all the, st in all the stress uh, that you're <laughs> undergoing here on the project. Uh, because of the adversity, I think you're actually going to find yourself. That's what adversity that's does. It's very deep. It's true, <laughs> it's though. Very deep. It's true. Yeah. That's the way. That's the way the. Um, that's the way human psychology works. Let's show some more environment. What are it's these, man? These episode. look. These look plant esque, huh? What are these? This is just more of the plant environment assets. I thought I would okay. show some of the stuff. Not rocks. I'm sorry, everybody. They're not. We don't have rocks. Oh, hold on. This is looking rocky. So mm -hmm. shard bluff labyrinth. Let's go ahead and turn mm -hmm. the knob here into a fiery hellscape. Block out so on the top. Bluff, mm -hmm. Yep. Shard Bluff is finished now in the block out. It is an absolute masterpiece. I think what we've got to do is get Emil and Vanya, they're a partner team on this project, on a showcase, and get them to run around and, and talk about what they did because this goes far beyond anything I'm even capable of. I like to think of myself as a good artist, well-rounded. I know a bit about everything, but what Vanya has done on this project is truly mind blowing. It is a compositional masterpiece and this level will be remembered for 10, 15 years. It is just gargantuan and the work that we're doing to the movement system in this region to make it traversable is going to blow people's minds. And to see the, you know, this is the difference between the block out and what the final will look like once it's set dressed. This level will take time. I'm not going to lie. It is absolutely it's it's so big i can't put into words just how big it is but we do have all of those movement systems being implemented like i said the gliding there's trampolines in this region to Look launch how tiny you up. the ranger is over here with yeah, like you could barely see it in the corner yeah. there on the left guys that's this, the scale he's is, talking about i went through art station trying to find set dresses about a year and a half ago and I scoured the entirety of Art Station over a two week period, gave myself RSI in my wrists from middle clicking on God. environment art profiles. And I came across a Milan Vanya who had done work on Assassin's Creed expansion packs. Mm -hmm. And she, she even said at the end of this project, she goes, all I ever did up until Alluvium was just like, mild set dressing in these expansion packs. And I was like, you're a, you, this is literally, genius level environment art it is just a i know it looks low detailed but you have to understand from my perspective the thing that is mo most hard as an artist is composition to make something well composed in an environment and make it look and feel great from any angle is truly one of the hardest things you can achieve as an artist in any field anytime anywhere and she has done what i consider to be the, the best compositional environment art i've ever seen it is just mind-boggling how good this turned out our entire team jumps into that chat that she's working on this commenting like holy shit like i can't believe this is our game and all of these assets are nearly finished the high res so we will do that conversion over a period of probably six months you know to to turn this from a block out to a final high poly but just you know you got to give hats off to vanya for this because i like i can't put into words how extremely over the top psycho 
this achievement was like it's i've I, I think this comment right here from scrub a dub dad yes. is encapsulating some of the energy yes. you're bringing banya yeah. is the dwayne johnson of regions <laughs> that's <Yeah>. great <laughs> that's awesome hey Just. man thank you for sharing that and you know and and that goes into uh you know the importance of building the right team uh to work mm -hmm. on a project and finding those there are gems out there but you like you said you had to dig through hundreds and hundreds of talents to find the thousands one. and thousands. thousands holy moly to find the tens one. of thousands Jeez. i went through the entire art station the twice entire, art station twice. is an entire database of artists yeah. and you went through the yeah. entire data holy yeah. crap i i sat there with kieran one day just middle clicking on every single profile just click 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 next page click click Wild. click 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 40, 40 tabs, 50 tabs open, 400 tabs open. Spend a day going through and messaging every single one. Hey, we're a random crypto game. Are you want to do some crazy shit? You know? That's crazy, man. They said yes. Feels amazing. More texturing work, I believe, from a cut on Halcyon C. So, yeah, there's yeah. seven regions in the game, not just one, you know, seven. Seven regions. Obviously, this one's from Halcyon Sea. For those of you yep. that don't aren't familiar, mm -hmm. that's our uh, let's say ocean, aquatic, maritime oriented uh, region. What the hell is this, Grant? You need to answer these questions right now. What in the hell is this? This is the hangar in the Leviathan ship. So this is underneath the oh, Leviathan arena. Oh, it's in arena. the Leviathan ship. Got yes. it. Now, yeah, I get this it. is okay. where you enter the ship. So. Early on, you'll, I think anyone who was on this project around the very, very start, early last year, you know, January, February, one of the the first leaks we put out was Arlen's ship. And, mm -hmm. you know, that will be in the game as well. And it's there's lore here. This will be featured in the cinematic that Glow Studios is working on with us. And Cantamere has finally finished the interior hangar once again i've said a million times how good cantamere is as a modeler and how clean and efficient everything in this game is and you can see the detail we put into every aspect of it so we're like blending sci-fi you know fantasy based characters uh, it's got everything and everything is to a high standard that's awesome guys this would not be an episode of Alluvium Showcase, unless we brought you some rocks. <laughs> I'm sorry, we are really not bringing that many rocks on this episode. I only have one, and I would call it rocks, Roxy type of leak. It's this. Oh, that's uh, not even a rock. That's it's a like, terrain, it's like, but... yeah, it's, I don't know. That's all mm. we got, guys. So I can I'm give sorry. some context to this. Okay. This is the landscape within Brightland Steps. And I've got to I've got to give credit to the tech art team who's been able to I think Max has been able to take our terrain system from Unreal, export it to Houdini, and give Salvatore the ability to run that terrain through Gaia with processes like erosion because the Brightland Steps area is meant to be like one of those Scottish Highland type areas where, you know, you, the giant mountains with the water systems eroding the pathways. And that's a geological process that is impossible to do in Unreal and you have to do it in an exterior engine. But in order to do that, the terrain has to be one terrain. Whereas previously we built the terrain from like six individual Unreal Engine terrains, and it just made it a logistical nightmare to get it out of Unreal I see. into Houdini and mm -hmm. then back into Unreal. And it was like one of those things where I and Dimitri were like, whatever, screw it. We want, we'll just sculpt it in Unreal and it won't be as good. And he was like, nope, I've come up with a solution for this, you know, proprietary method to take it out of Unreal, do the conversions in Houdini, give it to Salvatore, and then mm -hmm. we end up, if you zoom in, you can see that there's really nice erosion and it's happening realistically. Yes. And now, well, especially along around, the edges there and the little details mm, below. Mm. 
of, uh, yeah. you know, the surface in between the elevations here is not flat. It looks natural. It looks somewhat randomized. It looks like uh, almost like water erosion has occurred yeah, in some it is. of these areas. It's fluvial. Yeah, right. Fluvial, fluvial erosion is what it's called. The process. Ah, I see. And it is just the details that polish these regions off. And you know, Crimson Waste is in the first Overworld beta. In the second Overworld beta, all three regions that we're launching in the open beta will be included. So we'll get testing on those. And then the following beta after that will be the open beta of the game. So chugging away. We we are making crazy progress. And I know it seems like it takes a while, but I think the beautiful thing about these showcases is we show just how much work goes into each one of these different things. Very cool. Now that we've showed you all of these very serious leaks, Grant sent over a whole basket of memes that we're going to share with all of you because you know I what we are done <laughs> we i'm sorry everybody we only leaked like a zillion things so let's get to some memes and i i hope that you enjoy some of these some of them are pretty damn good check this first one out do you have any history of mental illness in your family i have an uncle who collects nfts look at this man's face you know that's how you feel very good good meme I'm not going to explain this one. <laughs> Perfect. Everybody loves me. I can't find them. Our NFTs? No, the kids. This is Aaron. Oh. This is Aaron in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> this one's good. I like that one. That was one of my top ones. That one's really nice. <laughs> oh, good stuff. <laughs> Very good. Ah. Yeah, so how many of you guys at Thanksgiving, this ended up being the conversation around the table? Normal conversation? Have I told you about NFTs, me to my friends? How many of you guys did that to your family this holidays? You slipped in some chatter about Bitcoin or Ethereum with your mom. I did. I almost no got my mom to buy anymore. some Bitcoin. Almost. Almost. Very good. And, oh, and that's it for the memes, my friends. So... That is a leaksy episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. We delivered on our promises. I know it, we were re weak in the rocks category, but we did have some Roxy memes. Grant, I love doing the show with you. This was our 15th ah, so episode good. together. And hell, I feel like we're going to get into hundreds down the road. There's so see, much I, that we're working on. I love how the community, I'm just watching the community chat the whole time, like how engaged everyone is and just a part of it. Mm -hmm. Like... Feel free, you know, I do I do read all these comments in the episode. So if you're seeing things like the merchandise and you have ideas, we do take it on. There has been like countless times where the communities come up with an idea, even small, you know, just little like, hey, I want rocks on a shirt. That that will be a thing now. You'll be able to buy alluvial shirts with rocks on them. So keep you know, keep sharing, like keep keep getting engaged with us because we wouldn't do this if it wasn't to do it with a community it's not just personal it's you know trying to build a an awesome community as well why do you guys think grant streams at crazy o'clock to all of you guys he feeds oh. off of your energy man he needs your energy to keep going and to push this hard right saying why do you think i do what i do for a living everybody i uh -huh. do it to get your reaction if i don't get and that reaction from you i do, it feeds <laughs> me right so thank you to everybody for for being here and for uh, sharing your excitement with us. Grant, any parting thoughts here, buddy? Otherwise, let's close out yeah. this episode. If there are any like hand surgeons out there like, specializing in tendonitis <laughs> or RSI or carpal tunnel, hit me up because my hands don't work anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I'm laughing, but it's actually kind of sad. Grant, <laughs> I really hope that your hands can be healed, my friend, but the work that your hands are doing will live on into infinity. All right, I'm going to boot you out, buddy, and we're going to go cool, ahead man. and Thanks, play. Bro. You got it, dude. We're going to end the episode with some original sound track music cranked up. Thank you so much for all of your support, everyone. We'll see you for Alluvium Showcase next week. Hopefully, we can deliver on the idea we have of making it a live gameplay of Alluvium Overworld Beta. I'm working on that. I can't promise it, but I'm working on that with the team to see if we can deliver that for you. Uh, as quickly as possible in 2K at 60 FPS on YouTube. That's my goal. See you in the next episode.
Adios.